but we know when this airs, she's watching, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we miss you, Lori. Well, in today's show, we're going to discuss something that has been really uh, pivotal uh, for us as people of color. And it just really saddens me that in this day of age th that we're still dealing with racial profiling. It's unfortunate. Some people think we're overreacting, perhaps. Or is it something that we choose not to deal with? Racial profiling to me is immoral, it's unethical, and yet it's still an issue that we're having today. Yes, yes, it, it's a big issue. And the problem is, is that every single person that I know, a person of color, has actually felt this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. it is pervasive, it mm -hmm. is everywhere. Even just in getting ready for this show, yeah. there have been so many instances, you can just rattle them off one by one. Yeah. In yeah. fact, sometimes you even get desensitized because it happens, it's insidious. Yeah. It mm -hmm. happens all over the place. But let me give you the definition, let's just start off with the definition of what racial profiling is. The use of personal characteristics or behavior patterns to make generalizations about a person, especially if, to see if they are engaged in illegal activity. Mm -hmm. So we know from the beginning, racial profiling is a negative and it's a suspicion, an unwarranted suspicion that someone has automatically done something wrong. Sure. The, the examples of this are crazy. I mean, we know it happens in grocery stores. We know it happens when you're shopping. We know it happens when people are at work. We know it happens when you're in banking. We know that the, the impact on our civilization, yeah. on our society is so huge. But the thing is, is that each one of us experiences individually and each one of us has to come up with a response to it. Because what happens is someone is judging us, but it comes our responsibility of how we deal with it. Yeah. And that's why it, it affects us at, at a molecular level. It really affects us. And in addition to that, you know, it, it's not always negative. For Well, it is negative. What I'm saying is like racial profiling, let me negate what I just said. It's, it, it is negative, but even we're guilty of it sometimes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And so oh, we yes. have to control the responses that we, right. you know, that we give or even forget responses. How about just a simple thought? Yes. And decisions yes. that we make, yes. right? Yes. And, and you know, we all have hidden biases. It's, it's to your point, like, we have to be responsible to deal with it, right. acknowledge it. Yeah. So the classic example is you see two or three African Americans and they're in an elevator. Mm -hmm. A Caucasian person steps into the elevator and immediately clutches the purse <laughs> because you think yeah. these people are going to rob you. The irony is that it doesn't matter if you're in the most high-class hotel, five-star hotel in the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if the person is dressed to the nines. It yes. does not matter. I was thinking um, recently my brother was pulled, um, was visiting my sister. She lives in an all-white neighborhood um, in the Midwest. And he went to just a Walmart. Now, if you know my brother, my brother always dresses in a suit. I mean, just from birth. I think he was born in a suit. So my brother is always dressed, always very clean. He's an architect, um, well-spoken, all that. Goes into this, mar this Walmart and immediately they say, oh, I'm sorry, our, our lotto machine is down today. Oh, our lotto no. machine is down today. No way. And he's like, and they use whatever the, the, the term of their lottery what? is in that state. And he was like, I don't even, like, what are you talking about? Wow. He's like, well, I'm so sorry that the, lot the lottery machine is down today. And he's like, okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm here for something else, for tools or whatever. Did he say, what about me said to you that I want to play the you lotto? Know? That's the answer. I yeah. want to. And what it was, was this. Mm. We are constantly being judged yes. on visually what you can yep. see. Again, it doesn't matter about your income. It doesn't matter about your education. And more importantly, it doesn't matter about your character. No. Right. That's the yeah. thing. It's an assumption mm -hmm. that all people of color mm -hmm. are inferior mm -hmm. and they're somehow negative. You know, mm -hmm. to that, it's so funny. Your brother experienced that, which I'm, it's not surprising to me. Just recently, I was at a, um, an event and it was selling these, you know, paraphernalia, really cute stuff. And I saw a hoodie that I thought my husband would really like. And not looking at the price tag, I just picked up the hoodie. And a Caucasian woman says to me, she says, oh, that's $75. <laughs> I mean, Oprah was punked. 
Oprah's a billionaire. Yeah. yeah. And she couldn't afford the, uh, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. scarf. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I just said, I was like, I should purchase that hoodie just because you said that. But then I didn't because I remember my husband said we in a budget. We have a budget. So this was my budget <laughs> for the day. But the bottom line was you automatically assumed I couldn't afford this hoodie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at her and she said it not once, mm -hmm. but twice. Yeah. And I just looked at her and politely walked away. Mm -hmm. Granted, I didn't purchase the hoodie, but she was profiling me. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I experienced that, that identical scenario for almost 20 years of my career when I was working with college access programs. And my thing was take these babies to college bookstores oh. so they can pick out stuff. And we do a college trivia game. And I, I gave them the authority, you pick the stuff, I'll buy it, and we'll have this fun game. So we'd be, we'll be at Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. and they're looking. And thank you for your taxpaying dollars. We pay for it. <laughs> but, but we had a budget. Yeah. And, they would, and I would watch people look at them while they were picked hoodies and expensive things. And sometimes they weren't expensive. They became very clever and, and would, you know, they were frugal. But I watched it and then they picked up on it. Yeah. And, and wow. it was a great teachable moment to say, pay attention to this. Look what's happening. Wow. But that's happening. I mean, all across the country, I've traveled to many, many institutions of higher education where these college bound kids who were brilliant minds, all they happened to be was black or brown. Yeah. And you know, they were low income first gen, yeah. but they were profiled. Yeah. They had every right to be in that bookstore or even on that campus and qualified yes. academically. You know what else happens? Work study programs. So financial aid, work study programs, and there's a list of really good jobs. There's internships, mm -hmm. there's secretarial mm -hmm. stuff. There's all kinds of paper jobs, good jobs that are out there, but they will send the cafeteria jobs to the black community. And that's all that they will know about. Like, oh, okay, well, this is my list of jobs that I can take. This is the ones that I can take, and they're the cafeteria jobs, et cetera. They don't eat, they're not even privy to the information about those other jobs that are available. So when this wow. stuff happens to us, like your brother, right, or the hoodie or in the, in the store, one of the things I used to always say to those kids, when that happens, mm -hmm. when they give you these menial tasks, what type of voice are you developing to say, now, you know this ain't right. I was just talking to a grown woman the other day. She's a non-traditional college student. She's about to graduate with a social work degree. And they placed her at a, um, uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to say the name of the organization because right. it's a national organization. But sure. they put her at the front like doing administrative tasks. And those, those frontline positions are very, very important. But she is preparing to go out into the workforce. Internships are designed to give you hands-on experience so when you apply, that you, you know, you're able to compete. Right. Let it, we didn't even talk about the name on the application. Yeah, We're just talking ask. about experiences yeah, right yeah. now. And so she was really frustrated. She says, I know how to file. I know how to staple. I know how to answer phones. I can do all that. So I said to her, you need to go onto that website, you know, look up what the verbiage says about the internship, and you talk about how this is not preparing you for this. But all of her other classmates have very yeah. meaningful, like, extraordinary yeah. internships. Anyway, I'm really glad to, to hear and that they overturned it and, and they granted her what she wanted. But this is a very well articulate woman yeah. where we had to sit down and present a case uh -huh. in written form yeah. to get a result. So, you know, many of us have a voice, but what happens when we don't? Yeah, yeah. Right. When we don't. Well, speaking of voice and speaking of many of us, we want to show a clip right now of this couple that lives in Chad's Ford. And what they experienced was so um, impactful that it was caught on the news. Watch this clip with us. He is a senior executive with pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca and has most recently worked in Britain and South Africa. But now he and his family have returned to Chad's Ford where he built his home in 2007. But the evening of July 7th turned into a nightmare for the Gillespie family. Action News reporter Dan Quayer is live at the media barracks of the state police. Dan, what happened? Well, Jim, the Chadsford's couple spoke to us from their upscale neighborhood home. They're telling their story, hoping to prevent this from happening to someone else. It was just a terrifying experience. It was embarrassing. It was um, just humiliating. 52-year-old pharmaceutical executive Rodney Gillespie describing the ordeal he, his 52-year-old wife Angela, and 17-year-old daughter allegedly went through at the hands of Pennsylvania State Police. It was back on July 8th at 12.30 a.m. They were returning to their Chad's Ford home from a family gathering in New Jersey. Gillespie was pulling up to his neighborhood onto Otwater off Webb Road when he noticed flashing blue and red police lights behind him. But because the road was too narrow to pull over, he decided to drive slowly up to his home and see what's up. 
But what he says happened next at the hands of 23-year-old Trooper Christopher Johnson, who'd been on the job about two months, was out of a horror movie. The trooper shouting a barrage of questions at him. He said something about, why didn't you stop? And I told him that I was scared, uh, I was afraid of, you know, a black man that was unsafe, and I did not want to get shot. The next thing you know, the trooper, who is white, pulled him out of the car and handcuffed him as three other troopers would soon arrive, shouting a barrage of more questions as Gillespie calmly tried to explain that he lived here. And, and I'm sitting there with my hands up and a light is on. I was like, oh my gosh. So I was too afraid to bend down and get my phone out my purse. Ultimately, the troopers confirmed the couple and their 17-year-old daughter you know, did, in fact, live at the home they were at. And after 10 minutes, they removed the handcuffs. I wanted to know why they stopped us and... He said to me that they stopped us due to elevated breakings in the area. It was just driving while black, unfortunately. It's, it's unfortunate that that's still occurring in this day and age. You know, he's a black man driving in a nice in neighborhood. A very nice neighborhood, a very nice area. And there were a lot of assumptions made. The entire episode was captured on police dash cam video. The Galepsis filed a complaint with state police who say they are investigating the matter. Uh, we left several voice messages with a number of state police spokespeople and sent several emails but have not heard back as of time for this broadcast. Live here at the state police barracks and media, I'm Dan Quayer, Channel 6 Action News. Jim? Thank you, Dan. Wow, that was, that was something. How do you yeah. guys feel about that? When I see something like that, I think that's every man. The bottom line is it doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. You can cross every T, dot every I, but they're looking at this and that's all that matters. Yeah. It's terrifying. It, it, it is. It's simply terrifying. And, you know, it could happen to any one of us. And, and you know, that particular neighborhood is an affluent neighborhood. Absolutely. And, and um, I mean, that was a beautiful home, but that's besides the point. That shouldn't exactly. even be an issue, but it does you know, clearly say that this is a problem that's inherent. It's like embedded in the culture. It's so deep. Yes. You know, it's like there's a thumbprint in yeah. law enforcement's, I wouldn't say law enforcement, because all law enforcement is like, not bad. Right. You know, I, I know some awesome men and women yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who, who serve, but it is terrifying. It's demoralizing. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that we still have to deal with that in this current age. And it's mm -hmm. so... It angers me to be very honest with you, because as a as a woman of color, you know, you were raising children of color and you have to educate them, say this is the real world. Not everything is, you know, perfect. Yes. But what bothers me the most is how dare you as a human being look at me any differently because of the color of my skin. Right. Right. But if you're born into that, if that's all, you know, if you're socialized that way, I get it, you, you know, like. You are part I do, of your I environment. I do get it, but also your circumstances doesn't give you permission to be Thank reckless. You. And so what do we do as a people to say, this is a problem, let's deal with it, let's talk about it. Right. And we, we have to, I think we are having some courageous conversations. We need to have a more and more and more. It's going to take time. It, it may take generations well, to change. Well, time. <laughs> you, you talk about courageous, and you were talking about police the other day, I mean, a, a second ago. The police have a really hard job. There are good police and there are bad police, just like in any other occupation, and they have a really hard job. And I was thinking about this situation that happened in St. Louis a few years ago, where there is a very crooked police officer, and he actually said let's, he would have blackout days. And blackout days the are when he Jesus. was telling his police officers, we're going to go to these um, um, uh, malls, we're going to go to these stores, and we're going to go in certain areas, and we're going to blackout and just get every African-American that we can. Mm -hmm. They knew in advance that they didn't have probable cause. They didn't have cause for anything. No but their Jim intention Crow, was to laws. go out yeah. and to just rack them up and throw them in jail Amazing. today. And he would call for these days. And there was a big investigation. But what the courageous part that I saw was the whistleblower. Mm -hmm. Because he too was a white officer. And he was like, this is enough. This is wrong. This is not what I signed up for. And do you imagine the repercussions he got on his own oh, job? Absolutely. Because that, that cold blue, right. where you stand up for police officers, that's very, very serious. Yeah. So he was set aside. He was um, written up falsely for all kinds of things. He had his police car taken away from him. You know, some police officers can take their police cars home. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things happened to him, but he was standing up. He and nine others stood up against this. There was a big investigation. The guy was fired. Mm -hmm. I think later on he was reinstated at a demoted level. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because, and, and when I read that, I was like, oh man, can't we catch a break? So, so we want to celebrate. 
these right, types right. of yeah. quote unquote whistleblowers or people who speak up or who speak up courageously. But what we do know is that there's always going to be a cost. Yes. And how much of that cost are we willing to pay? Yeah. Right. But on the other side, there is another cost for us. There's there's a fi there's financial implications, tremendous financial implications. It mm -hmm. costs more to have your automobile insured if you're black. We know it costs more if you're millennial. So mm -hmm. we, you know, yeah, that's that dictated true, yeah. based yeah, on yeah, what yes. behavior and algorithms. Who mm -hmm. knows? I mean, this artificial intelligence thing is nutty, buddy. <laughs> right? I wonder if <laughs> those watching. formulas that they create. I, I'm not an IT person. I don't know how that works. But I, I wonder if there's a some kind of software developer that plugs in there that says if you report that i am a woman a black woman uh an asian person from this age whatever the demographic is does it calculate a percentage of, of, of cost mm -hmm. for for your insurance rates or amazing. anything mm -hmm. related to consumerism amazing that'd be interesting to see well for um i've been looking into airbnbs recently Mm -hmm. And there have been so many scandals with Airbnbs because basically you're opening up your home, you go through all this, this information. And at some point after you've said yes, you've said yes to the amount, you've said yes to the, um, the, the dates, mm -hmm. but as a rentor, you get this person's picture. And that makes sense. This is right. a picture of someone who's going to be in your home. You get this person's picture. How many times have they turned around and said no after already saying yes? Once they see that it's an African American face or it's a his or it's a Latino face, that has happened so many times. In fact, sixteen percent of their cases have been t overturned because someone has done that. Complete racial profile. So, and they're losing business because of it. It's horrible. They're horrible. losing business. In fact, two companies have come out. I think it's called Air uh, Noir or Noir yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I heard two about companies Noir. have come out because yeah. they're saying if you don't want to take us, you know, there are plenty of people who will take us. Right. You know, we'll just we'll just service our own. Yeah. And that's cash that someone's leaving on the on the table yeah. because they said one woman actually said, I don't take niggers here. Oh, she wrote back no in response way. after canceling this person's um, stay. I don't take niggers. Well, advice. I don't give money to people like you anyway. Okay. Wow. Um, this reminds me of a gentleman that I know up locally. He has uh, he started a pizzeria with delicious wings. Anyhow, he ended up building a franchise up and down the coast. But it's like an Italian place. Yeah. But he's a black man. So, you know, what this black man did. He hired a white family to be the face of course of his business. Absolutely. And the thing blew up. He sold it, He's and he paid. was like, "The joke's on y'all," <laughs> you know. Paid. We did that, right. but but um, I even think about like in, in entertainment. Years ago, I was in in talent buying, and artists would come in, and depending on the type of artist and the, the crowds that they would yield, will determine whether or not the insurance company would insure the particular show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I remember being exposed to that early in my career. Like, this is messed up. So it's all these business decisions, but there's there's the, the financial cost. But what about when it's, you know, life or death? And I do mm -hmm. want to spend some time talking about health disparities. So just to clarify what a health disparity is, it's the inequalities that occur in the provision of health care and access to health care across different racial, um, ethnic and socioeconomic yeah. groups. And there was a study recently by the Harvard Public Health about high maternal mor mortality rates in African-American women. And I think this kind of, it didn't first come to the scene, but we started talking about it a little bit more when Serena Williams, a tennis player who is boss, we love her and her fabulous thighs. Yes. And, you know, she's All just, fat, everything about her is just so dope. Um, but she had just given birth to her baby and she knew her body and she said, something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong. And they wouldn't listen to her. Yeah. And sure enough, after being persistent and using her voice, eventually they tested her and, and it confirmed what she was saying. And she's an athlete. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. knows her body. She knows her she's body. a celebrity. Yeah. I mean, you would think those two things alone would give an extra ear. Chad's Ford. What trumped that? That gentleman, it didn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, but with Serena Williams, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, you know, we'll get to you when we get to you. So what we learned, the common thread is that when black women express a concern about their symptoms that clinicians were more delayed and seemed to believe them less. Mm -hmm. And that's horrible. Um, another high profile case was Judge Hatchett. Her son mm -hmm. had a baby uh, with a beautiful woman. Her name was Kira Johnson. And I, I never forget her name because I don't want to forget her name mm -hmm. because of what she, you know, what she, well, she was, I don't, can, can we say she was murdered? She was, 
neglected in the care of physicians. She had a baby. She went in with a cesarean. From the moment she walked in, had that baby, 12 hours later, she was dead. She told the doctors, something is wrong. My abdomen hurts. I'm bleeding profusely. And she kept pleading with them, her husband. Now, this is Judge Hatchett's daughter-in-law. These are, and she was a, uh, she spoke five languages. She was a, a skydiver, a race car driver. Again, a bad chick yeah. who I think knows how to articulate for themselves. Totally neglected. Ten hours later, they finally bring her into surgery and they found two liters of blood in her abdomen. They could not save her. She died. Amazing. She died. So this is an expensive cost of being black. Absolutely. It's life and death. It's it life, is life, and death. life and death. Well, did you ladies catch the series on Netflix um, about the Central Park Five? Oh, absolutely. Did you get a chance to watch it? I did. I, I, you know, I, um, it was hard for me because when it came, first of all, I remember it clearly yes. when I was a child. Me too. Um, I, I remember hearing pieces yeah. of it. Uh, but but I knew when that surfaced, when that story surfaced, it was bringing up a lot of emotions, and I was dealing with some other stuff, and I knew it was going to yeah. ignite a fire inside of me. So yeah. I had to watch it in pieces. But I, I do did agree. See it. You have to watch it in pieces. Well, we watched it. Well, why don't you and recap it in case somebody? Has well, it. if you have if you have not watched this um, Netflix series, it's called um, When They See Us by Ava DuVernay did a phenomenal job capture, capturing these young men's stories and really seeing things from their perspective and how, what they encountered. And let me tell you, I do remember this case. And I remember thinking, okay, guilty, guilty, mm -hmm. guilty, mm -hmm. guilty, guilty, guilty. Because the way social media portrayed them, the evidence was stacked up against them, where one of the young men was actually coerced into saying, okay, yeah, I did it. He was coerced. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah they all were. he really was. Yeah. And with that being said, of course, if you go on national television and say, yeah, I did it, and, and, the, and the police officers were actually prepping them ahead of time to say this, sign this, it's okay if you sign this, you get to go home, you don't have to worry, you, you know, your parents will be here shortly. And they took advantage of the fact that these, these black boys did not know their rights. The parents did not know their rights. Minors. 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 And they were alone. I mean, there's so many flags on the plate here. Yes. yes. I yes. mean, it was horrific. And I watched this and I, and I was angry because it's unfair. It's unethical. And I couldn't believe how it was so easy. Even, even the evidence that was stacked up against them did not make sense. Mm -hmm. If you actually listen and not only watch the series, mm -hmm. but go back and watch the documentary. Yes, yes. As, as I watched it, powerful. I was saying, somebody, like, now you're going to speak up. Like, I, it's like, you, you know the outcome, <laughs> yeah. but as you're seeing the facts unfold, you're like, okay, now you're going to speak. And it, it, it never happened. Mm -hmm. Never happened. It and, never happened. And these young boys spent years incarcerated right, right. years 13 years i believe some i think a few were like a little less like you can never take that back you can't you can't but putting it in context first of all what what, what stunned me was the prosecutor and she was relentless she had an agenda she wanted to throw these guys under jail and keep them there forever. And, and despite logic, despite findings, despite the truth, she would bury all of that because yep. in her head and in they her heart, guilty. she was ready to convict these guys and throw them and, to, and shut the, the door on the case. Yes. The other thing was, if you remember, this happened in Central Park, but the bigger context to me, as, as I was listening to the, to the whole thing was, it was creeping into the territory of New York that blacks were not allowed. Mm -hmm. The idea was you guys keep yourselves uptown. Mm -hmm. Do not come down good. here where the money is. Right. And if you remember, Trump and other realtors got involved in that. They yes, called for was, lynchings. Yeah. They called for lynchings mm -hmm. of these guys. Yes. And the big signal was, no, no, no. You do not cross this line. You do not make, make my property values go down. This is a real estate issue. This is a financial issue. Yes. And we are going to nip this in the bud. That's the way I took it. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's nutty. It, it's so nutty. It's, but even like with lynchings, like even going back, you know, the why behind the what, there's all these perceptions, but that about, you know, black behavior or, or that's a whole nother topic, but mm -hmm. just going back lynchings. Yeah. I think there was like 4,000 lynchings, right? So what's that? It's like one a week over a period of time. And so, 
you, you, you condition the people yeah. to know that these people are inherently bad and yeah. not good. Yeah. And so that's years. And just like, you know, the, the whole slave trade, how much it hurt our people. It also hurt how some white people make decisions. So there's yeah. two sides to this. Absolutely. But, but it's, but I want to read a quote mm-hmm. very quickly from Ava, du- Ava DuVernay. I, I, this woman hands down is phenomenal. And she says, my goal was to humanize boys and now men who are wi- widely regarded as criminals. And in doing that, to invite the audience to re-interrogate ir- everyone that they're def- that defined as a criminal. I'm asking the questions to everyone. What do you see when you see black boys? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when she said that, I was like, yes. And to your point, this happened in 1989. Mm-hmm. And before that, civil rights prior to that slavery and 2019 and we're still going through it when do we say when there's so many systems that are for lack of a better word jacked up they're yeah, jacked up yeah, yeah. And, and i was watching an interview of the actor who played the attorney that was on the right side defending one of the boys uh-huh. and and the question was what did you learn from from this what did you learn from your role from learning more about the story getting into character and he said we have the wrong name for the justice system. I thought that was so That's powerful. Powerful. That's so, it's wow. not a ju- it's wow. not a judicial system. Wow. No, it's we not need a new name for it. Not at all. Not wow. At all. Because basically being black in a lot of people's eyes is illegal. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's just illegal to be black. Mm-hmm. And you are going to be grabbed up, snatched up just for being black. Mm-hmm. And and that's and that's the bottom line of it. it, it it's a mess. Um, wow. Even, even in the legal profession, there's such a, I mean, there's disparities everywhere. We talked a little bit about healthcare. There's disparities in um, the legal profession. There's, I mean, uh-huh. I think there's like 3% black lawyers in the nation and maybe 1.9 partners in the nation. Yeah. And, and like maybe in the 70s and the 80s, there was probably maybe a black lawyer, lawyer in a 200 mile radius. And so you got to go into the court of law. And, and there was one scenario where, where the attorney walks in, he's a black man, and the judge literally turned his back to the attorney. And he could, he wasn't breaking any laws. But he didn't want to make eye contact with the black attorney. So even, it's in the legal, I mean, it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's systemic. It's systemic. And the, the impact that it has on our finances, as we talked about, in our health um, um, care system, in our legal profession, even individually, because what this means when someone is steeped every day, it's like being dyed in the fact that you are not equal, that you are less than human, that you're only going to be as good as this, and this is wrong, it's inherently bad. When we steep our boys, our girls, ourselves, our grandparents are steeped in that, when you get steeped in that, the cost of that is so high because that means a person is never going to really be comfortable in their own skin which means they're never going to really realize their full potential. That to me is the greatest cost of all. We are telling those people that they are not worth anything. And that's a tragedy that we all have to take hold of, that we all have to take hold of. And the biggest thing is that the the onus of that is on us. Mm -hmm. The the ones who are truly victimized in this situation, we're the ones who have to take the onus of 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 getting it off. Mm -hmm. This is a huge conversation. Yeah, <laughs> this is a yeah. huge conversation. There's so much we didn't cover, so much more that we want to get into. Yes. We're going to have to do this again, ladies. Yes. We're going to have to do this again. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. We are so excited. Every time you join us, you've heard our vantage point. You know, we always want to hear yours. So hit us up on social media. You've got all the information down there. Make sure that you reach out to us because we're here for you. That's our vantage point. What's, What's yours? yours? your vanish